Hello everyone, in this video we are going to look at the drawing shear force and bending moment diagrams while applying singularity functions. And we have a guiding question that says draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the beam loaded as shown in the figure below and determine the position and magnitude of the maximum bending moment and the position of any point of contraflexure. If you have not seen this question answered, uh, I used several methods, for example, method of sections to solve this problem, getting bending moments and later on drawing the shear force and bending moment diagrams. I will share the link to this particular video in the description so that you be able to go and see. Then you compare the two methods, the singularity functions and also use of usage of uh, method of sections. Then you will be able to see that actually the singularity function method is always simpler than uh, any other methods as long as you apply it correctly. So we have uh, a beam which has uh, a roller support at A and a pin support at B. We have a uniformly distributed load of 4 kN per meter. Then the point loads of 5 kN, 7 kN, and 2 kN at C. Now I have, uh, as I said, I've already solved this problem and we have uh, the solutions to this problem. Uh, we apply, of course, equilibrium conditions and we'll be able to get the reactions at the supports. So then later on considering segments, segment 1, 2, 3, because you have to put a section at every discontinuity from A going forward, you have to see that the, before you reach this 5 kN, you need a segment there. Then after the 5 kN, going to the 7 kN, you need a segment there. Then after moving after the 7 kN, then going to C and uh, looking at B where there is a support, you see you need a segment there. So there will be three sections and uh, you apply the equilibrium conditions to several segments and be able to come up with the equations to determine the bending moments and the shear forces at particular sections. Now, having determined that, you will be able to use those equations and be able to draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagrams. Then, uh, using other methods, of course, uh, uh, an analysis will show you that the maximum bending moment occurs at a particular point between E and D and you can use the information given uh, to get this equation therefore when you differentiate it with respect to X you'll be able to get the maximum bending moment you equate it to zero, you equate the dm with the X to zero then you solve for the value of X so that is uh, the value of X at which Bar, uh, the bending moment is maximum. Then you later alone uh, substitute this value of x in this expression for bending moment and you'll be able to get the maximum. So you can see it's uh, quite a tedious uh, work and uh, it consumes a lot of time. In this video we are going to look at how to utilize the singularity functions and be able to determine the shear force and bending moments at any point of the beam uh, and this will take a very short period of time so first of all we know we have to get our free body diagram for this beam and uh, later alone calculate using equilibrium conditions calculate the what the reactions at the supports and after getting those reactions you indicate them on the free body diagram then you create two axes the y axis and the x axis and then you start considering each force each force distribution or each force obeyed uh, point load or uniformly distributed load obeyed reaction at the support you consider them at a go 
but uh, while considering the, the distances at which they are from the origin. So if our origin is at A and we are proceeding along the beam from A to X, therefore our axis will be, the X axis will start from O, from A going to C and beyond. Now the other point that we need to note is that while applying the singularity functions that involve uniformly distributed loads ensure that the uniformly distributed load starts from the origin and ends at a point where you are putting a section for example if you say your section maybe is x x and ends here then you need to make sure that the uniformly distributed load reaches here so that's why if it stops here you need it to extend it okay so after extending it here uh, it means you need to bring another force down that will counteract this so if we have put this uh, for example yes we have said it is this now you need to introduce in this part this portion of the force to counteract this one that you have added if for example this uh, uniform distributed load was stopping at D then you would uh, increase it like we have said it would start from here and here so you would uh, increase uh, the portion of the uniform distributed load from D then you would also put it down here so that at the end of the day the effect of this and that cancels out since they are pointing in different directions uh, which are opposite and therefore their effects would be cancelled out so having used the, the equilibrium conditions of uh, we have determined the reactions at the support now we can go ahead and uh, write down the shear force equation using singularity function now we look at the a from we start from a this is the origin at a so now at a we have uh, a force which is uh, in a vertical direction we are considering upward forces being uh, positive and downward forces being negative so 15 kN acts at this point and is at a distance x minus 0 if uh, from this point going up to the where we have put our section where you put the section x x that distance is x so from that point to where uh, the section is you have a a distance equivalent x minus zero because uh, there is a, a distance zero from the origin to the line of action of this force uh, of 15 kilonewton so and remember if it is a, a shear force we will create this bracket 15 uh, then singularity brackets x minus zero cross the brackets to power zero because at the end of the day this is equivalent to one and this remains still a shear force so minus 5 and uh, this 5 is pointing vertically downwards and it's a point load so it is a point load and is, it is acting at a distance uh, a 1 meter from O where the origin is and the distance therefore from where it is to the section will be x minus 1 that's why we are putting a minus 5 into x minus 1 then it power 0 since it is um, a shear force then we go to 7 kilonewton the 7 kilonewton is also a point load and is acting at a distance x minus 4 from uh, the origin so i mean it is acting at a distance x minus 4 from the section uh, meaning it is at a distance uh, x equal to 4 from the origin so you move one plus three meters then you will have four meters so that means you will have minus seven then you create that singularity bracket x minus four because it is acting at a distance equal to uh, x equal to four therefore the distance from the section will be x minus four we go to this point load uh, which is due to the reaction at this support B it is pointing vertically upwards and we are going to make it positive then we create singularity bracket x minus 5 why x minus 5 want its distance from the section and since it is acting at the x equal to 5 
then the distance from the section xx it will be x minus 5 at power 0 then if it is a uniformly distributed load from here to there we have uh, the uniformly distributed load running over a span of x up to the section so you will have 4 into uh, x minus 0 because the distance from where the uniformly distributed starts uh, to the origin is 0 and therefore we will have x we will have x minus 0 times the informal distributed load to get the distance from of course we are saying the distance from where uh, where you have the section to this uh, uniformly distributed to where this uniformly distributed load starts from is x minus 0 uh, then it power 1 because uh, this is uh, uh, this is a, a, a step we, we use a unit step function and therefore we, we will always use if you want a shear force and using the singularity function when you are having a, a distributed load then it will always be w into uh, x minus a power one whereby a is the distance from the origin to where to where the uniformly distributed load starts so x minus a will be the distance uh, this uniformly distributed load is from the section xx that you will have chosen then plus again because we want to consider this this four i mean this uh, uh, force uniformly distributed load that is pointing upward that we created in order to counteract the effect of this so it is at a distance uh, x is equal to 5 but now it will be at x minus 5 from xx so the value of a is 5 so it will be 4 into x minus 5 to power 1 then minus again 2 these two let us include it uh, because uh, later on we will see that uh, either it is acting or it is not there depending on the distance from depending on the distance from a or the origin because at the end of the day if it is the shear force this uh, two kilonewton will be felt when you are considering shear forces on this particular beam except uh, now maybe when you go to the bending moment it's when it will be cancelled out because at this point if x uh, is equal to 6 and that is the maximum length of the beam then you will have no moment this two will move from xx from the section xx uh, if uh, of course x is at 6 meters so we have finished the singularity function for finding uh, the shear force um, the shear force there uh, for finding the shear force at any point x along the beam and therefore we can look at now the bending moment the bending moment uh, equation can always be obtained by just mere integration of the shear force uh, equation the shear force equation now you have 15 uh, into x minus 0 uh, integrated this you will have plus 1 so uh, where you have 0 to power 0 you are going to uh, increase it by 1 by 1 by 1 uh, then 19 into x minus 5 to power 1 you have uh, uh, now if if this if you integrate 4 into x minus 0 to power 1 you will have to increase by 2 then divide by the new power then the same thing for this one it will be 4 out of 2 x minus 5 squared then minus 2 into x minus 6 power 1 we can still leave this one this 2 uh, depending on the on the value of x because now if we want it, uh, the for example if we wanted the bending moment at x bending moment at x equal to for example 3 whatever is uh, above th where we find that we will get a negative then all of that will equal to 0 for example I'm saying if I have the function being for example k 
into x minus a power maybe n and i find that um, uh, x is less than a then this one will go to zero now let us come to this expression for the bending moment bending moment at x equals to three we will come and put in 3 here this will be 15 minus 3 ah, ah. this will be 15 into 3 minus 0 ah, that will be 45 then minus 5 into x minus 1 ah, put 3 here that will be 2 minus 1 so this will be minus 5 times 2 that will give you 10 so 45 minus 10 you will get 25 so the bending moment at x equals 3 should give you uh, that bending moment will of course at x equal to 3 should be equal to maybe 35 because this is uh, 3 by 15 that is 45 minus 10 that will give you 35 kilo newton meter okay if we want the bend the shear force at x is equal to 3 so v of 3 will be you put the values here and there the rest will equal to 0 because uh, the value of x is less than a so all these uh-huh here you can put uh, sorry this will be you also put it here so it will be a plus plus this is three power nine it power two it will be nine times nine times four out of two that will be two times that that will be 18. so remember this is a minus so if I subtract 35, uh, if I get 35 minus 18, what would it be? This would be something like uh, 17. Uh-huh, kilo newton meter. Mm -hmm. So the shear force at the x is equal to 3 will be 15 into 3. Okay, power 0, then minus 5 only. Then minus 4 into 3 because this was a, into a number to power 0 which is always 1 so what is this this will be 15 minus 5 that will be 10 10 minus 12 this would give you 2 kilometer. so at x is equal to 3 it should give you a uh, shear force equal to 2 kilometer. now when we draw the shear force diagram this is what comes out you see at x equal to 2 uh -huh. let us see at x c at x equal to 3 this will be 45 we say the um, minus 10 that will be 35 okay this will be negative 2 so you come here to the shear force diagram and this should give you negative 2 okay then a uh, bending moment at x equal to 3 we said that bending moment is equal to 17 kilonewton so you come here and see that it is 17 kilonewton so you follow these figures value by value uh looking at the first of all you should understand that where you have a uniformly distributed load you expect a parabolic bending moment and linear shear force diagram then following those principles you are able to come up with this diagram by also substituting in those values in these functions also you have to understand that where you have a point load it causes a jump in the shear force diagram and where you have a, a moment then it will cause a jump on the bending moment diagram at the end of the day we have drawn these graphs using matlab and we have found out that the maximum bending moment is 17.5 kN. Thank you so much. This is how you can determine the shear force and bending moments using singularity functions.